Would you look at that? A developer comes out and talks about new next generation features that can only be done on the Series X and PC. That's right, this new RDNA 2 technology can't be done on the PlayStation 5 as of right now. Let's get into what was said and see what advantages Xbox has over the PlayStation 5. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to be notified on future content, make sure to hit that small little bell icon. It helps out the channel a bunch. But alright, let's get into this next generation feature that apparently the Series X has and the PS5 doesn't. You might have heard about this for a little while now. We've always talked about RDNA 2 and how it's become this talking point in the gaming media. A lot of people want to know what does it mean, what features are there, and how does it make a big difference between the two console systems. Well, we know that this was a big discussion during the launch of the consoles last year or late last year when they were coming out. We know that RDNA 2 was the buzzword. Everybody talked about it. Outside of that Bethesda acquisition, this technology was what was talked about a lot because there's a huge gap when you look at performance in games when these technologies and these new features are actually implemented into games. And this is something that we talked about before on Xbox, how they waited for full RDNA 2 features before they took the hardware and put it into production. Something that Sony just didn't do. This is well documented, everybody knows about this, and it's something that Xbox really wanted to hone in on when they were launching the console and building the console. They wanted to get the first and foremost, the best next generation features on their console to help performance on games. Because like we've said before during the PS4 and Xbox One generation, Xbox never wants to be outdone in power and performance again. It murdered them during the Xbox One generation. It took their knees out from under them. And it would seem that id Software, again a first party developer at Xbox who was making third party games for a very long time, has confirmed they're using some next generation features on their platform for Doom Eternal. That's right, they're using VRS, which is one of the next generation features in RDNA 2 to help get better performance on this Series X in this free update. Here's what's said in the article. Doom Eternal does not confirm a VRS on PS5. The Xbox Series X S uses RDNA 2 technology. The latest production from id Software has been tested by Digital Foundry, whose specialists praise the work of the Bethesda studio. As it turned out, the British also confirmed the lack of VRS in PlayStation 5. Doom Eternal has a free update for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S, which is recognized by the Digital Foundry. Specialists confirm that the developers paid attention to the great quality of the ray tracing. It is only unexpectedly that the new version of the production does not use anisotropic filtering, which worsens the image quality. Okay, so let me stop right there because the one thing I want to talk about is the free update. Free update, Sony. This has been something I've been talking about for a little while now. We see that Doom Eternal as a developer is bringing out a free update to both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Something that Xbox has been doing with their games for quite some time now. Free next generation upgrades because of smart delivery. Well, that's something that Sony just isn't doing. They're either tying their PS5 upgrades to some DLC, so if you want to get the PS5 upgrade on a game you already own, you're kind of getting a $10 tax on it, which I'm just not cool with. Not to mention they raise the prices of all the other games that they're making, new games, to $70. It's almost like you're paying $10 more just to get the next generation version. I do not agree with this. I think Sony needs to address it and I think gamers need to address it and kind of show their discomfort with their wallets. I won't be buying all these upgrades to the PS5. That's just a waste of time, especially when I get free upgrades on my Xbox Series X and my PC, which I just got. So not only do I not get taxed on it by 10 bucks, they come for free and all these upgrades come for free. But I digress, let's get back into what the topic is all about, which is about these updates and what it does for both systems. Here's what the article continues to say. The id Software title in 120 FPS mode works on the Xbox X series with a dynamic resolution of 1800p and on the PlayStation 5 it reaches 1584p. The Xbox Series S also offers such smooth animations, in this case the maximum position in 1080p. 
but the lowest measured resolution was just above 720p. By choosing the balance variant, players can calculate with 4K PS5 and Xbox Series X and 1440p Xbox Series S at 60 frames per second. Digital Foundry also emphasizes that Doom Eternal hits the goal of 60 in 120 frames per second, depending on the mode chosen. British journalists also confirmed an important detail. Doom Eternal uses the VRS functionality on RDNA 2 on Xbox Series X and S that PlayStation 5 did not receive. Okay, so this is where things get interesting because they do go into VRS, which is a full functionality feature of our DNA 2, which the PlayStation 5 version is not getting. Here's what is said during the interview with Digital Foundry and what the developer themselves had to say. It also worth noting that the Xbox Series consoles use the hardware VRS feature of RDNA 2, which is not found on the PlayStation 5. VRS stands for Variable Rate Shading, which adjusts the pixel shading precision based on factors such as contrast and movement. Before it was released, there was a lot of discussion about whether or not the PS5 has this feature and the truth is it doesn't have any VRS hardware support at all. And there you have it. After so long of people saying RDNA 2 and RDNA 2 75 is on the PlayStation 5, they don't have VRS hardware support. That's the key factor there. The key word is hardware support. Is there software? Maybe, but it doesn't have the hardware support. That's where things change. That's where performance changes because you can use the GPU. You can use all the hardware aspects, which is powerful in the Series X to help with the VRS support and feature to get the full breadth of what it can do. Software isn't cutting it there. That's where the things differ between the two platforms. And we know that Xbox waited for full RDNA 2 features on their system. We know that Sony didn't. So expect this to become even more prominent as the generation goes along. It's just common sense. We will continue to see more games utilize VRS and all these other RDNA 2 features that Xbox is able to utilize. On the other hand, PlayStation won't be able to utilize those. Will they have other standards and other techniques that they can do on their system? Of course, but it won't be the top breed of the solution, which is something the article says right here. Digital Foundry advises that developers can take advantage of MSAA's hardware anti-aliasing, but BRS has been described as a best of breed solution. This is the nail in the RDNA 2 coffin if you ask me. It's obvious that a lot of these features are Xbox exclusive at this point. A lot of these features are something that Xbox waited for. It's why there's not that many Series X's out there in the world. It's why PS5 has dominated the sales records because they just have more systems out there because Xbox waited until about late August, if not early September of last year to start pumping out their systems. Can Sony do some things in the back end to help fix this? Maybe, and I think they can, and I hope they do, because I do own a PlayStation 5. I want to see these performance boosts in these games. I mean, the developer at id Tech and the developer that was talking to Digital Foundry said they're getting about 10 to 15% performance boost from VRS. That is insane to think about. Think about all the stuff that they can do with that, the games and the performance, the differences they can make in the fidelity that we see on screen. That's the whole point of this. Xbox Series X tech is insane and truly next generation. And it's only a matter of time before developers start to use the full breadth of these RDNA 2 features. And the gap between the PS5 and the Xbox Series X is going to widen just a little bit more. Is there gonna be games that run great on the PS5? Of course there is, because it's a very powerful and great piece of hardware but again it doesn't stand up to the series x and what it can bring especially when developers start using the features that are baked into the system and baked into the hardware that's the whole point the hardware pushes the software and the software can get the best out of the hardware it's kind of a symbiotic relationship and that's what rdna2 has done it's bringing those things closer together so developers can have better tools to work with while they work on their demanding games that's the whole point of this that's why this is almost exclusive to xbox and that's why developers are using these tools in massive games like Doom Eternal is. But enough of what I think about all of this tech. Tell me what you think about all of this. Is the PS5 going to ever get full RDNA 2 features? Is this going to be the best Xbox Series X exclusive tech that they have? What can Sony do to combat this type of performance gap? When will even more developers start using the features of RDNA 2 to get better performance? 
How long until we see the gap between these two systems get even bigger? Go down below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button to support us out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. So right now, I'm playing a lot of games. I just got my brand new PC with a 3090 in it. So I'm going through all of the games on game pass i'm downloading iron harvest all the strategy games like phoenix point you name it i'm gonna play it because a lot of strategy games are only on game pass and i'm gonna be playing those i don't care i love it if they're on the console but to be honest i think that strategy games play best on mouse and keyboard that's just the way it is there's a lot of moving parts and you have fun with it one of the best games that implemented strategy was halo wars 2 i thought that played great on the console because it was optimized for the console and i think that gears tactics is one of those also i've played that on the console and that was great for a strategy game but i'm playing a bunch of other games also rocket league just cause 4 i'm playing everything assassin's creed valhalla i'm just kind of jumping around having fun but let me know what games you're playing are you playing anything right now that you're enjoying on game pass or are you playing something on the console or even your pc or are you playing something on your playstation 5 let me know down below because that's what we're here for it's to talk games and that's all for now thanks for watching and until next time remember enjoy your gaming later